Hello everyone, it's Elena and today I'll share with you guys how I take notes on my iPad. I mainly use my iPad during lectures and I use the app Notability to take notes on it. Now I have the 2017 iPad and I got the biggest storage size because I use it for all the documents that I use in school but I also want to sync my entire library of music and my photo library etc and that's why I just thought that a bigger storage would be really useful for me. Now, I also got the Apple Keyboard for the iPad, um, so you can just like clap that out and you put your iPad on it. I found this to be a not so great investment, wouldn't really recommend buying this one, um, unless you're really thinking about typing on it, but I don't really think this keyboard is that great. I think there are better options out there for less money. So yeah, well, I got it and I don't really like it that much, and to be honest, I actually started taking it off and just using this case, so you can just slip your iPad in and then you can put your Apple Pencil in up here and I found that more useful because I just really don't need a keyboard because I don't really like typing on a keyboard it's not as natural um, for typing on a keyboard as it is on a computer and so I really prefer using my laptop for writing out essays etc and I just use this one for taking notes okay now let me show you guys how I take notes on my iPad and I'm gonna switch to a screen recording because I couldn't really record this with my normal camera because of the lighting so yeah, I'm going to show you guys now how I set up my app and how I organize all my notes. When you open up Notability, you see all your notes here and this is just kind of messy because notes from all your subjects are together and for me this is not really convenient. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to categorize. I have two folders here, one for my induction week where we had a few things that um, the college made us do in order to prepare ourselves for the course, but those aren't things I need now anymore so I just usually keep that folder closed. But really important for me is my first year folder where I have my five subjects that I'm currently doing and all of the things that I have for them in Notability. Now let's for example just take Criminal Law and here you can see all my lecture handouts and my readings and then a few supervision handouts. I don't always put my supervision handouts on Notability, just sometimes when I want to annotate it then I just find it useful to have it there. And what I usually do is I give my lecture handouts a number, so one, two, three, four, five and so on, so that they all appear first in Notability and they're all together, they are the numbered ones. And then I take all my readings and I always put the word reading before it so that they all get put together because Notability puts your numbered things first and then it goes by alphabetical order. So if you start all of these out with the word reading, they're all going to be put together. And that's why also for every supervision handout, I basically name it almost the same, the only difference being the number. So that it also gets put together and then I can just find it more easily. But really my main purpose for using Notability is I'm annotating readings when they're really long and complicated or then using it for lecture handouts. And I mainly use this thing in lectures. I don't think I've really um, used paper in lectures at any time. I have used my computer once um, because one lecturer just made you write down a lot of things and I thought it was faster to use my laptop, but that was the only exception. So let's, for example, take this lecture handout on homicide. Now, um, usually our lecture handouts aren't as spaced out as this one. Um, so I usually add spaces, like especially here between cases, because then I can just write down more about the facts of the case. So what I do is I download the handout from our virtual learning platform, and then I just add spaces to it in Word. I find this really, really useful. Sometimes you don't really need more space because um, the lecture handout is just quite comprehensive, but often you do need it, so I just find that a really useful tip. Now what I do is I always use um, this purple color to um, highlight my things that you know are just important from this lecture handout. Um, but then I also use green for cases because I find it really useful if you have a different color um, to mark out your cases, especially in law, because then you can just easily see, okay, this is a case. So what are the facts of that case? What was um, you know, what was decided? How is this important for what I'm studying? And then I always write down things in gray. So gray is just anything that the lecturer says that's important, that's related to a topic that, you know, I just wish had been on the lecture handout already, basically. Um, but then I also use a few other colors. Um, let's see, here we go. So I use a lot of pink on my lecture handouts as well. And pink is my faults, where I'm like, oh, wait, okay, I can connect this to something else. Um, or I remember that somebody said this about this, and I just want to make sure that I have this on my lecture handout. 
like those are usually thoughts that just come to me and I just want to make sure that I write them down. And then I also use blue sometimes. Now blue is um, a little bit like pink. It's also about thoughts, but it's usually something the lecturer mentions. It's more like a side thing that's not entirely important, but like it can help to, you know, connect dots at times. And so I like to write down some things which are interesting. Um, or here we go. Sometimes a lot of things. Like for example, here we had a, a longer discussion about like a particular aspect of the case and um, those are like some side thoughts because mainly you need to know what was decided in the case but I found this discussion really helpful and then I sometimes use other colors like here you can see I used a lot of colors I used purple I used some darker red and even some green and that's done often because I just don't um, have enough space to only work with my gray because it would just get really messy so then I like to use different colors to just you know make sure that I don't get confused um, where that you know scribble belongs to so sometimes that can help but the only colors which have real meaning here are the gray the blue and the pink and those are the only ones that I use for writing and for highlighting I use my purple and my green and that's it and this just helps me to keep things really really easy and to make sure that I know what my notes mean so I could print this out now and I would exactly know if something is highlighted in green it's a case if there's something written in pink, it's my own thoughts. And if there's something written in blue, it's a thought of the lecturer probably and like some side discussion that is not the most important aspect, but it can be helpful to study. And this just helps me to go through all my lecture notes because they're all organized the same way. And by that way, it's just much clearer what you're doing. So you can see, I just write down usually like things about the facts of the cases or when the lecturer says something that's important for it. And that's pretty much all I'm doing. During lectures, I just try to listen. And whenever there's something that isn't on the handout where I think I would need this in order to understand the lecture handout, I write it down. And here you can see I also highlighted things in blue. Now my blue highlighting is um, further reading. I just highlight that in order to, when I print it out, see, oh wait, there is something pointed out that you could read on this um, so that I don't you know, accidentally um, trip over it. But that's not something that you know I need to look at like, during um, the lecture itself. And usually I highlight these things in advance when I go through my lecture handout and space it. Now, when I do readings, it's a little bit different because usually I just highlight um, and that's pretty much it. Now, this is for example a case and here, you can see it like, here it is, we can skip. This is a quite long case. And then here's like some highlighting and usually that's about it. Like sometimes I do make notes on the side, usually in gray, that's it. Um, but the highlighting just helps me to, when I go through it again, see, okay, those were the things that were important about this case, but that's about it. Like, I wouldn't really, you know, make a lot of notes on my readings because I do take notes on my readings and so it's not important for me to take notes on it in Notability. I just find that rather inconvenient because you don't really want to go through 50 pages of reading to like find all your notes that you scribbled on the sidelines. So rather I would write up a good summary of the reading and I find that just much more useful. Now for my supervision handouts, I usually um, only put them to Notability in order to get an overview of how much I've gotten done. So I just um, download the entire thing and then for example here, I just go in and look at the um, overview things and then I make a gray tick when I have the reading. So I don't necessarily have done it yet, but I have it so I can, you know, start at any time. Because very often in university, you get told, oh, do this reading, but you don't necessarily have the book or anything. So you might need to go to the library, check it out. And that's what I have these gray ticks for. And then I always draw two boxes. First box is I read this. Second box is I took notes on this. Normally I wouldn't take notes on textbooks and stuff. Um, in this case I did because this was a quite hard topic and I found that taking notes on that textbook really helped me for this one. Um, normally I wouldn't do this note, but um, I always have the two boxes just to show me did I read this and did I take notes on this and I find this really really useful. The other reason I sometimes put my supervision handouts into Notability is that I use it to analyze problem questions. Now here for example is a problem question. Now in the box is the entire scenario that was mapped out and I just wrote down a lot of stuff in different colors to help me then structure my answer. And this probably looks super, super messy to anyone who like isn't me because I just knew like what I wanted to achieve with the different colors. But for me, this really helps when you have a problem question because here you just have an infinite amount of colors um, and you know, you can just go through this and underline with any color and write down stuff. 
And I find this pretty helpful when, you know, thinking about the different aspects of a problem question. Obviously, this is not enough to then structure your response to a problem question, but I think it's a great start for just mapping out your thoughts. And that's why I usually, um, when there's written work, import the supervision handout into Notability, and then I just write down a few notes on it, and then later on, I write my outline. Now, sometimes I also use slides, so let's go to Animal Rights Law, so I can show you guys how that looks. And um, usually I just get the slides from the virtual learning platform. And then what I do is I just highlight with my usual color coding. Very often lecturers don't have slides, so I can't do it anyway. But if they do have slides, then I do like to use them if they are more comprehensive than the lecture handout. And then I basically just treat it like a lecture handout. And you can see I also use green um, for legislation because we don't talk a lot about different legislations. It's mostly cases. Um, and since we use the cases for um, the different rules that were established in them, I find it appropriate to also use the green for legislation. And you can see here, it's really the same way of organizing the notes, the same color coding. And here again, when I don't think it's enough to just use gray, then here I had free colors just to make it more easier for me to see what I was doing. And that's just how I treat um, slides when I use them. I don't use them a lot because I just find it less easy to go through them again but I do find them sometimes more helpful than the lecture handout, depending on who's the lecturer. And yeah, that's how I organize all my notes of notability. I find that app super, super useful. I know there's another one out there called GoodNotes. I haven't tried GoodNotes, so I don't really know how they compare. Um, I just straight up went with notability, and so far I've been very, very happy with the app. I also have the app on my MacBook, so I can access all my notes um, when I'm working on my laptop as well. I find that really, really useful, but you don't really need it. You could export all your notes as PDFs, and then you have it as well. But personally, I'm just, you know, a little bit too lazy to do that extra step. And I just prefer to have it all, you know, organized the same way on my laptop as well. I do have to say that I'm not a completely paperless student. I did really try my best to get there, um, but it doesn't really work. Cambridge doesn't really allow you that, especially because from next term onwards, we have to write all our essays by hand and it doesn't count um, as written by hand if you write it on Notability. So um, you can't really go entirely paperless at Cambridge, or at least not as a law student in my college, but I did try to reduce my paper as much as possible. And I think Notability really helped me do that. And yeah, that's really, you know, what helps me most with just, you know, taking notes during lectures and in class. If you guys want some more tips on effective note taking and how to organize your notes, I wrote an entire blog article on that and you can find the link for it in the info box. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.